The nigga big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing. Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Nothing, you know, my dad. Hey, man, she she is Jamaican. So. <laughs> <laughs> Check it, man. We got a very special guest in the house today, man. This guy right here, really, you, if you if you like me, a Pimp C fan, you've been hearing his name ever since the '90s, man. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's it's real it's real good to have my boy Bobo Luciani in the building. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, man. Man, I appreciate y'all. man, just just uh, appreciate you. Hey. You know what I'm saying? I uh, um, uh, appreciate the legacy, man, and everything that uh, you uh, ushered in, you know, far as uh, the way that you, you know, put yeah. it down back in the days, man. I'll try it. And, uh, and the Dallas thing, man, I've, I've always frequented Dallas and Houston because that's, that's the big city for me, yes. where I'm from. Yeah. So um, when I look at when I look at what, what you bring to the table, you got some uh, things, some gems hidden that nobody probably even know that you never spoke on. No. Uh, some stuff you probably never will speak on. Never. But at the end of the day, there are some things that we have to enjoy. The legacy of my boy Pimp C, man. You know what I'm talking yeah. about, man? Got to keep it alive. I see exactly. that shirt, man. I like yeah, that. Man, where, they got, exactly. who got that? where you man, get that at? My buddy Red Rum, the Swisher Boys, he, um, he sent me this link yeah. one time on... Um, Facebook, I said, man, I gotta get it. Man, mm. and, and I didn't and, know the people. It was it, it was, was real professional. I ordered, and, and, it, came and it arrived. Wow, on time, yeah. on time, but like that. I, rem- I, I I remember the uh, back when Pimp was living. Them Algiers T-shirts was coming. Yes, that's yes. what I was wearing back then yeah. and selling. I, I actually sold them because mm-hmm. we had this store uh, since uh, oh, 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 07, yeah. oh, 06. So I was selling Algiers. I know Dan, the guy who who uh, they was really dealing with back then. You remember that? Um, Algiers ad that had pimp with the black. Yeah, I, yeah. I got that shirt. Do you? Yeah, he gave yeah, me Yeah, I bet shirt. I had, like I said, I sold all of them. I, I, I got I, the shirt he wore in the ad. Oh, you oh you do? Yes. Wow, that's He gave dope. me a lot of stuff right before he passed. Really? Not, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, but, but I'm you holding did, on to it. Yeah, you holding on to yeah, it. Yeah, that's my stuff. And I don't blame you. I, I would definitely be holding on to it because that's something, to, uh, you know, Really, you know, you you'll never be able to replace those type of things, man. Exactly. Sentimental value or exactly. something on the utmost high. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so just going back a little bit about you um coming up, uh and, and Miss Jamaica usually do this part, but she's uh some kind of busy right now. I, I, don't, see know, I don't know what's going on, but yeah, two it, <laughs> two person team. <laughs> oh yeah, we always yeah, I like here. this. But but the thing I can say is like uh, what we ask is like kind of you from Dallas originally. Oak Cliff. Oh, Cliff. Yes, sir. That's your South hood. Dallas. That's my hood. Wow. Singing Hills. Singing Hills. Singing, swinging Hills, Hills. Texas. Oh, yes, man. So, coming up, how was it over there? Like, as a young boy, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, well, how early, baby, do you want to take him? As far back as you can remember. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was real family oriented over there, you know, just hood, you know, hood store. Go to the hood store, play video games, everybody walking around, you know, doing their thing. It wasn't, you know, it was in you violence and stuff. Not really. Everybody was getting along. Oh, but you, okay. did you come up in single parent home or were you? No, you know, that's, mom and dad together. That's odd that you say that because everybody, pretty much everybody I know, was single you parent. Know, yeah, or either came up, you know, grandparent things like that. My mom and dad were together until my mom passed. So wow. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, that was. How old were you when she passed? I was an adult. My mom just passed 26, 2016. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. You were blessed. So you were you were the anomaly in the hood. One of them. There was a few of us, you know. On our street, you know, it was kind of a family oriented street, mm-hmm. but you know, we yes, yeah, there's a lot of people in that in that neighborhood that single parents and all my all my buddies, same thing. So. As a child, did you look at that as a blessing or you just didn't even No, you don't think about that. Don't think about you that. don't think about it until you get to be an adult, then you realize that it's systemic. You know, the black man not being in the household and that type of thing. And you, damn, what's going on? It's like this in Pleasant Grove. It's like that in North Dallas. It's like that in West Dallas. I didn't know it was. But I bet you the friends who didn't have both parents in the household, when they did come over to your house, they look at it right like. Oh, yeah. Is- yeah. My mom used to cook, make candy, and all this type of stuff. She was a cooker. Everybody knew my mom for cooking. So all so, the friends came to your oh, house. Oh, yeah. I was the Kool-Aid house. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the house everybody loved, loved to hang out at. So. Yeah, that was that. Did you have siblings? 
Yeah, I got, you know, I'm the baby of two older sisters. Oh, so you mama's Three boy. Three older sisters, huh? You mama's boy. And the yes. older boy, so it makes it even worse. Yeah, and I got four daughters. Wow. Mm -hmm. Four daughters. I've been no around women. No boys. No boy. Well, I had a little boy, you know. That's, that's, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I, I was going to ask you about that, but not so early on, but I guess I can <laughs> now because you brought it up. Yeah. I wanted to know, because I wanted to know, we was that, that real when I heard yeah. that in the song? Because you don't ever know if something's real or if somebody's rapping yeah. to make something sound or good. how much of it is real. Yeah, because Biggie would say, he when he rapped, he would say that wasn't real. His mom, his mom later on would say that part, he was just rapping, but this part. But this was actually a real event that happened to you. Exactly. Let me tell you something since we on two subjects. You know, mm -hmm. you're talking about me and UGK. You know, I was involved with rap way before UGK. Yeah. You know, I, I came up with the uh, the boom bap, the hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the early stages. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was real about just showing skills, rapping, you know, storytelling and things like that. DJ Ushay, Dr. Rock. That's, that, well, Ushay was my clique. Okay. You know, Uche, Snake. Okay. Snake's like my older brother. I know? just know during that time, these these radio stations and they stuff. They was battling. That's yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. It was a DJ competition back then. Really wasn't too many rappers in Dallas that was doing their thing. But And then once I started hanging with Chad and Bun, I realized these dudes was talking about real life situations. But how did you meet them, though? You can't just ride off into that like that. No, bro, it's a, uh, it's a story. Yeah, how did so Go how ahead, did you? Okay, tell it. Okay, well... Like I said, we were doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you heard of the group Nemesis. Yeah, come mm -hmm. on, man. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. one with the eight oh eight to hit hard. Yeah, come my, on, man. That's Stop my brother, playing, Snake, bro. Yeah. I told y'all I love music, bro. You're not oh, gonna yeah. miss me. Yeah, that's Snake, you know. So uh our hearty death party, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. That's when we get down. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that later on yes, in the show. Sir. But um yeah, well, I was living with Snake and we you know we were doing our thing. We had two major labels, I mean two major acts sound to uh profile records in New York. And um which was Nemesis and Ron C. Uh, trendsetter Ron C. Yeah, come on. Like, you know yeah, I know Ron yeah, C. Yeah, yeah. So, Everything you're going to say, I'm because I'm, I'm listening to the mute. The beat. Back then, it was the beat. It was Mag all about bass. Yeah, it's, Magic Snake, Mike. Yeah, Snake was the bass king of the South, really. And then yeah. Mag Magic Mike. Mike, yeah. Mag yeah. yeah. He, he was in Miami. Or Miami. Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, if you had any kind of Rockford Files Gates oh, or yeah, any kind I of Pioneers or anything like that, yeah, you, you tested your... Your yeah. speakers out with that. Yeah, so, two know. points forty five oh, on yeah. two different on yeah. two eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's me. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I what you talking about? Cut the whole back seat out the you car. You know what you talking about? Yeah, when you say um, yeah, yeah. On, yeah. I cut the whole the, all that metal. I got to get rid of all that. Oh yeah, just for the sound. just for the two speakers to sit there. Oh, yeah. I didn't even need a box. People I don't close that Monte Carlo uh, mm, trunk. Humming. It's humming. over. Yeah. Humming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told her, she said, well, how long do you think? I said, maybe a while, man. Men and their toys. We know. Hey. We come up during the same era. Let me tell you something. I'm thinking about doing it again. Hey, why not? I love music. Man, me too. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm not too old. No. To, to enjoy that. So mm -hmm. I got something at the house. Was, yeah, I got a 72 Chevelle SS with the, I got the speakers in there. Oh, yeah, I got a, I got, a got to have it. Got I got to have a little sitting in my driveway, same thing. Something going to hit. Yeah, but I want something else. You want something to go even harder. Yeah. 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 And there's nothing wrong with that. I thought about getting like one of them. Uh, Monte Carlo SS that, that that one that came out with I think it was the eighties with the chrome uh, with the the gray color one yes but that thing was bad oh, the right yeah. yeah with the SS at the bottom yeah yeah oh, yeah. yeah my brother got one too that's a sweet car yeah yeah but I like the gray one he got the maroon one you know the yes. maroon gray and black yeah, and the white and the white one yeah that, and they were, and I even seen a hatchback one with the with the yeah with the win window like that's a circle I seen it. I ain't seen that one. <laughs> I seen it. It's in the country, too. You sure they ain't made it like that? No, no, like no, no. Like, it was it, <laughs> somebody in the No, no. No, you know how that window come with like a little hump I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but it still got the, it still got the length. It ain't. What it, was the trunk? It's no, just. You said hatchback. No, it's got the the window. I'm talking about how it, it know, has the curve, curve, but you still got, you you know. Trunk you still, area. Yeah, you still got trunk uh -huh. area. So it, it, it's a nice car. It looks good, but I still want that original one because that one, to me, I want that gray gray with the, the length and everything, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, uh, man, you took me back, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, we were we were doing our thing and, you know, we were traveling all over the South um, and we were kind of partnered up with Rap a Lot. Yeah. So every time we had a show, we included them. Okay. And every time they had a show, peace out. You know, I want to say shout out to Big Chief with rap a lot. Yeah, yeah, Big Chief. He, he called Mr. Us. Lee was here. Yeah. Was that night for Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. yeah. You know what? That's how I never met him. You know, I, him? You, you he was here the night for I was, I was no, in his presence once. Was that yesterday? Tuesday, yeah. We do right. so Tuesday. much. We be working, man. You serious when you run at night and today? <laughs> 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 she, she know how it go with like, me. 
Let me oh, check yeah. the calendar to yeah. make sure. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, yeah. We just be rocking out, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely, man. Uh, so go ahead with it. And um, yeah, so we had befriended. I don't know if you're well. Excuse me. I'm gonna stop saying that. I'm gonna stop saying that. So, go ahead. You remember the convicts? Yeah, yeah. Okay, for so, sure. So we had befriended three, two. Yeah, that's hell my boy. Yeah, that's, that's my that's boy. Them boys went hard. And and uh, Big Mike. Okay, Ooh, so that, that's yeah. I, yeah, I, that boy had a good spot right there. But oh yeah, he went hard. Oh, they, I mean, that early rap a lot. It was so raw. Yeah, I mean, uh, mellow. Yeah, Ooh, that was my boy. Curtis. That was your boy, Curtis. Oh man, went hard. Peace, but, oh. Oh my God! I hate hey, when he died. Man, that was a that man. Melo used to hang so much when we was on the, on the road. That was my guy. Wow, wow. that was my guy, man. man. And then Bushwick, Bushwick taught me how to uh, roll blunts in Kentucky. <laughs> All right, he was the first person showed me how to roll blunts in Kentucky. And um, yeah, so we were on the road. And so I don't know if you remember when I know you heard about this, but Death Row wanted to sign the convicts. Yes, and yes. they were in Los Angeles for okay. a while, and Right around that time, they had gotten the words that Willie D had dropped out of the ghetto boys and they needed Big Mike to fill those shoes. Yeah, yeah. And so I think there was, I don't know if it was in the friction or whatnot. What's up, Big Mike? That's my dog. Oh, anyway. I need uh, to get him on the show. Big Mike uh, Big Mike flew on back to Houston. Well, 3-2 flew to Dallas because he was going to write some things for Big Al on the next up-and-coming Nemesis okay. album. So they said, oh, Bobo, go get 3-2 from the airport. So I go, I had a little Hyundai, 1992 Hyundai. Go pick him up, man. Go pick him up, you Stick know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, the bare minimums back there. <laughs> we broke, you know, we still Yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, man. With the stash in it. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, I go pick 3-2 up from the airport, and he, um, oh, boy, check this out. And he put this cassette in. He said, these little young boys about to be some stars. One with a trigger, two with a... Who yeah. is that? That's me, eh? Yeah. I say that yeah. every week. I, that's the but first one I heard. Songs. It was about three songs. I, that's on there. the first one I heard. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know that. where I heard it just like you and when I heard it. Yeah, yeah. So, right, I would say about two, three months after that, we started hearing it filtrating up in Dallas. You know, it, it, it got on rotation on K104 mm -hmm. and whatnot. And a guy I grew up with from junior high school, I'll tell you about this guy too. This is, whew, I got so many. Yeah, I really you ain't got no tape. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bring me back. I got you. You got to bring me back. You. You to bring me back. Anyway, um, him, his name was Ron, and this gentleman named K. Rude. Okay. I know you heard people yeah. speaking about K. Rude. They do one of the livest concerts in Dallas history. It was at Wed and Wild okay. in Arlington, where right above the wave pool, was the stage. Okay. And everybody was in the wave pool in the little inner tubes floating. That was the dance. That was the yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was the crowd. Yeah. And you had Yo Yo. You had um Spice. Oh, that was high. Spice one. That was UGK. High. And there was a couple other people. And, and where it was, you know, they had a little hotel. I can't remember the name of that hotel, but it's still there. It's old now. But they had rented that hotel out for, the, the, for the artists. I'm talking about weed everywhere, drinks everywhere. So I have, I, I met them there. I was around them, excuse me. Mm -hmm. there. You're around them, man. Because that was around town. They were shooting a video for uh, Tell Me Something Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. They, they shot that here in Dallas. Yeah, in I did, yeah, 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 yeah. Them so, boys, I love that video, too. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, what's up, we? You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? He's, in, he, he's one of the dudes that's in that. You remember when they were chasing the dudes and the dude was under this? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weed. Yeah, that's yes, weed. Yeah. Bo both of them dudes from Singing Hills. Oh, yeah? Yeah, both those dudes are from Singing okay. Hills. Yeah. So so uh, I met them there. So fast forward maybe another month or two, we get a call to uh, say I'm Ron C's hype man. Okay. So I'm on the road with Ron, and we, Ron had just got out of the pen from doing, you know, he had a 20-year bid, and he did two on that 20, and we did um, – the uh, Back on the Street album. Okay. So we on tour with two shorts. On two shorts, so we got about mm. eight dates. I tell you about this tour. This this tour is wild. Yeah. It's supposed to be Too Short, Spice, and Ron C. But it ended up, every city we went to was more and more acts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So by the time we got to the, the first city we went to, we thinking it's just going to be us three. Mm -hmm. And we get there, bro. It's like In Too Deep, Second to None. It's, it's all these people on the show. It's like, oh, my God. 10, 10 acts, you know what I'm saying? So we go, and they say, you know, we, we rehearse for a 15-minute show. So we get there and say, oh, yeah, y'all got five minutes now. Mm. I said, oh, shit, bro, what are we going to do? 
So Ron say, well, well, we're going to go out there and kill it. I said, well, you know, we got this thing where, you know, I'm coming out. You know, it was real productions back then. Yeah. You know, I had this this, this Afro wig. Yeah. You know, a lot of people remember this, this this tour. I had this Afro wig and I had this real chainsaw. And they used to call me Bobo the Psycho back then, right? Wow. And it was all prison theme. Ron came out with his his thing on, you know, his little jumpsuit jump like suit. he's in prison. Mm -hmm, I had mm -hmm. the, He had the blue one. And I had to, actually, he didn't have, he had blue dickies and a blue, just like on the album. Mm -hmm. And then I had the jumpsuit on. But okay. I had, you remember, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to jail and lose there and they White. put you on orange. Or orange. Yeah, you kind of aggravated. Yeah. He was aggravated. Yeah, but everybody wore the, used to wear the white. Used yeah. to wear the white, but the orange was the orange crazy. Was the crazy one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you I had, had the orange on. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? With the prison number. Uh -huh. And so I said, bro, as soon as you come out, as soon as you come through with that first verse, I'm coming with the chainsaw. And when I came with that chainsaw, crowd went berserk. Wow. And we killed that show. So by the time we got to the next city, everybody was talking about, ooh, y'all killed it. So they moved us up in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, not moved us up. Moved us back toward the headline. Yeah. And gave us gave more, more time. Gave more time. Okay. So we killed it for three, four more cities. And then when we got to Lafayette, Louisiana... We were in the Cajun Dome. And by that time, so I'm I'm kicking it with Spice. What's up, Spice? What's up to my man, G-Nut? Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, G-Nut and I had really bonded because G-Nut had the, uh, the real endo from Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he and I really so Y'all really, really bonded. <laughs> yeah, we really bonded. Yes, sir. He, oh, he was hustling on the road. I had, the had smartest to. thing I had ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, I said, this poor guy. What? And he's selling it. And it's state right. to state. I ain't trying to hear it. I ain't trying to hear it. Getting it. Getting it. So, I'm, I mean, it, you know, Go he's, ahead. he's passed away now, so I can I can say, you can that say that. Yeah. yeah, he can't go to jail for that. Well, anyway, we go to uh, we're in the dressing room. For some reason, they gave us this this great big dressing room, and everybody's Hanging in, in our dressing room. room. I'm talking about shorters in our dressing room, spices in our dressing room, and the uh, promoter, of course, is being funny with the money. Mm. Of course, that's and that's everybody's the in there talking about why this dude ain't paying us in there. And we in the Cajun Dome. I don't know if you ever been there. It's packed. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the wall, it's like oh, whatever it hold. It was in there. Yeah, capacity full. To, capacity. <laughs> it's full to capacity. Mm -hmm. That's an inside joke, mm -hmm. man. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's filled to uh, capacity, and here comes Pimp and Bun. First, here comes Bun. Bun is real, you know, jovial, you know, kicking it with everybody. I got pictures from that night. I'll show you. Yeah. And um, next thing you know, here comes Pimp. Cool. So as really. Ever. Oh, yeah. Pimp, what they had done, they had befriended two girls from Dallas that were strippers. Okay. I'm, you know, KT, I'm, what's up? Let's do my home girls now. But he walked in with them, looking like a pimp, acting like a pimp. And so I said, who is this cat? And he's pissed off about his rooms, pissed off about the money. And I said, damn, this nigga another lover. I ain't like him at first. <laughs> he came in showing his ass. Yeah. And so... <clears throat> We, be, you know, he started talking about, oh, y'all from Dallas, we will run, see y'all, blah, blah, you know, blah, blah, And then after the show, we really kicked it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They, you know, they had a little after party and whatnot. And he told us, we just signed the Jive. Well, And we're going to record the album, finish the album mm -hmm. in Dallas. Okay. I said, okay, so when we come, we're going to holler at you. That's back when Beeples was here. Yeah, right come now. on, man. So um, they beat me when they got here, sure enough. And I went to the pay uh, phone. I went to the studio. Uh, you went to the pay phone first, or you had a phone at the house? Yeah, house? yeah. Well, I had a phone at the But I go to the pay phone. It was cool phone. at the it was oh, cool yeah. at the pay phone. Yeah, quarter. Yeah. <laughs> what you caught in? Yeah, we yeah. were cool at the pay yeah. phone. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't nothing wrong with it. We had no problem with that. Oh, there no, all <laughs> all Everybody see us and they know that we got the beat, but that's how you show them. Like doctors. <laughs> <laughs> My mama said, you think you a doctor? They, they used to give us that rap. That's yeah, the way yeah. they would come out. <laughs> what, you think you a doctor Oh, you a drug dealer or a doctor? <laughs> drug dealer or a doctor. <laughs> so, Pick so, one. <laughs> or a rapper. Or, or a rapper. rapper. Or in the music industry, yeah. something like that. So he called you and uh, who called you? Um... Trip. Um, Who beeped you? And then you call him back. A bun. <laughs> bun. bun. Bun called me and he said, We'll come to the studio. So it's out there at uh, Sound Lab when Sound okay. Lab was out okay. in uh, Los Colinas. I go out there. We kick it, you know. And I'm, let me tell you something. I was so used to the way Nemesis and Ron C were doing their studio sessions. And it was, you know, Snake was, Come on, let's go. We got time. If time is money. But they were just relaxed and coming. Going, not worried about it. Oh, I don't feel it today. That's what Pimp came in and said one day. <laughs> I don't feel it today. Cancel the session. Mm. I said, damn, this nigga tripping. <laughs> so 
That first day, Ron didn't show up. Well, I, I remember that first day I showed up. That's before Blunts. So I rolled like about five fat, fat joints. joints. Yeah. They loved me for it. Yeah. They said, oh, this dude came through with some weed. Oh, yeah. He kicked Kicking it. in. Yeah. Yeah, we kicked it all day. Went back to the, that's when they were standing in the residence inn, when the residence inn was kind of new, and everybody had their own rooms, and man, we just kicked it, kicked it. And then the next day, I show up again, and by then, man, Chad just, you know, hey, man. You cool. I'm cool. Hey man, oh, when you come to when you come to Port Arthur, I want you to come to Port Arthur. I got my own house. Now imagine an 18 year old kid telling you he got his own house. He got his own house. His own car. And I'm thinking to myself, Bush. Right, and how nigga, old high were you side. at that time? Shh, maybe about 24. Yeah. Okay. About but 24. the 18 year old saying, I got all. I got this. my own house. You can come stay with me, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do your album for you. Da, da, da. I like your style. So me and him kind of really bonded. Yeah. You know, so we, I don't know what happened to me and Bud. Me and Bud still cool to the day. Like, of I mean, course. We're brothers. But nothing like. You and Pim. Because Chad, yeah. Chad moved to Dallas for a while and stayed with me. Yeah. He stayed with me for about three, three, four months. Yeah. And then when I moved to Port Arthur, when I was the hype man for UGK, you know, I stayed with him for hmm, Five to six months. Wow. Until I got my own place out there in Port Arthur. Yeah. But that's how That's how y'all met. That's how we came about, right? So there. and I don't want to skip nothing, but I do want to ask you because you brought up your son a while ago when I heard that verse, I didn't know it was a real thing or if it was or not. Yes. I just know he was jamming it. When yeah. he said it it made I so much sense. About that. I want to hear about how it was and was you know, how he how Yeah, what happened? Oh, you wanna hear what happened. Kinda yeah. what how did that happen? All I remember and how old were you at this time? You was 20 something then. Yeah, I was still about, this was in 1995. Okay, yeah. So, and yeah. would your son be your first child? Yes, he was five. Okay. It just, what it was, I was on the road with UGK, and they, it, we were in between um, Super Tight and Riding Dirty. Okay. And so, I, my mistake was when I moved to Port Arthur, I left my car here. I had car problems. Okay. And so, I'm thinking, I don't need no car down there. You know, because you know, Port Arthur was kind of a small city. And, you know, with them, they say, oh, man, it's way across town. But it'd be 10 minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I say across town for us is 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I say I don't really need no ride. Chad will chunk me the keys every time I want to go somewhere, blah, blah, blah. But I shouldn't have never done that. Yeah. Because when the, the show slowed down, I mean, we were doing shows. We'd leave out on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come back Monday or Tuesday and back out on Wednesday again. Wow. And that's that was that was that's our life. Working. So. I ain't need no car. Mm -hmm. But when the show slowed down and they started doing the uh, pre-production on Riding Dirty, yes. I had already gotten me another spot and it was across town. And I was working. I said, I'm going to give me another gig. And I've always worked. I'm, you know, I grew mm -hmm, up like that. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, I had um, a history working at Sears. Mm -hmm. Started here at Red Bear Mall. Yeah. So I go to Sears at the mall out there and see if they'll hire me. They hired me, so I was walking back and forth from, you know, it was about a mile. Yeah, 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 and so, good, good game. And so they got to traveling on me, you know, going to Chicago and stuff, leaving me in town, you know, because the record label wouldn't pay for everybody yeah, yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah, on pre-production. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, shit, man. Guess I moved back to Dallas for a little while. I called Chad. I said, bro, I'm going to move back to Dallas for a little while. When the, Closer to the time when the album comes out, I'll come, come back. Come back, yeah. So... Came back to Dallas. It was uh, my little boy's birthday was in, was in October. Okay. So I celebrated that five-year birthday with him. And, you know, two months later, December the uh, 5th, that's when, that's that, when that happened. Yeah. It I was, was with, he was with his mother or something? Bro, he was at he was at his at his mom's house. Okay. And which was his grandparents' house. Yeah. You know, so it was, I don't know if, a lot of people don't know this, but four children died. Okay, four, four children died. Four, four, four babies, the oldest so one being eight. They were his probably cousins. Cousins. Those stuff? were his cousins, yes. Did, Those were his did cousins. Did they ever find out what happened? Yeah, they. Uh, it was electrical. See, the, the father was a um, con contractor. Okay. A, a damn good one. A good one. And he had added on to, to the, the house. house. Yeah. In the electrical like we room. Added room. Yeah, and, you know, and they had been there for a long time. Yeah. You know, you know, when it was all on the news and everything, they were trying to blame it on Christmas lights. And, and all kind and, of other yeah, stuff. Yeah, but it, it ended up being faulty wiring. Faulty wiring. So the adults yeah. weren't there? Was there any adults yeah. in the house? Yeah, but at the other part of the house. And where, where, where this, how this house was, it was like, you know how it is when you add on to your house. It's, you come out the back door and boom, you're in another room. Another room. And they had built an upstairs part. So they in that other part of the room upstairs. Wow. And then when the fire broke out in that section of the house, this probably this side of the house don't even know it's on fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying no, to no, play. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but I'm trying, trying to play to it in my mind. Yeah, your mind. Yeah, so, you know, once I got the call, it was already over. Yeah, it was over. You know, I had you just sat down, 
from work when I got that phone call. Wow. And it was a, probably about a 10-minute drive. I drove there, and yeah, it was it Was, fun. It was the mom there at a time when it happened? Yeah, but uh, all I remember them telling me was that the mom's dad was, was trying to get him. He was trying to get to him. He, he got hurt. Trying to get trying, trying to, get to, get to him. him, yeah. The flames prevented him from reaching him. So yeah, yeah he, he, you know, he had scaled the, uh, you know, some outside. Yeah, trying, trying to, to get, get to, to him. him. Yeah, which yeah. is which is quite natural. That yeah. that's what you would do. Me it's nothing. It's nothing like seeing four small cats. No, it's no, bro. ain't nobody trying Ooh, to see it. It changed it for life. It so. changed, and I know that had to hit you. And how did how, how did, did you it how did you uh, how did it affect too? The father, because if he was trying to get, it's different. Like. You weren't there, but this person, him, was there trying to get to the kids. And, and let, me, let me explain something to you about this guy. This guy, it's kind of like the same situation with me and my wife. It's, there was an age difference between him and his wife. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he was an older man, but he was still working. Yeah. When I say older, this was like a 70-year-old man. Yeah, still okay. working, you know, full gray beard and everything. Just cool, you know, just a cool man. And he probably just couldn't get there. Couldn't I'm get pretty there. sure it affected right. him. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, know. Well, yeah, I never talked to him. I never talked yeah. to him about that. that never, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. that's a damn good question. Because yeah. to, when you're there and you're trying to help somebody, especially with kids, yes, you know yes. that that they have to affect that's, you. That's oh, going to yeah. affect you. I, and well, you know, back then nobody was talking about mental health. No, they wasn't. Nobody was talking about mental but health. But they were going through it. Oh yeah. Especially for a man, you know, men supposed to be tough. Tough. Like, yeah. Yeah. Supposed yeah. To be, you know, we kids. Yeah. I'm in my twenties. How did you? How did you move forward? Well. A lot of stuff. I mean, family. You know, I can remember leaving that scene. Me and the mother, we went over to my parents' house. I called Chad, told him, because he knew him. You know, he knew my whole family, my yeah. mom, everybody. And he, I, I can remember him crying like a baby. Wow. It was, oh. And so, fast forward, you know, funeral's over. You know, we trying to live our life. And I can remember being on Greenville Avenue at Good Eats. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, this is the story I tell you, my beeper go off. I'm eating, and the beeper go off. And I see his Chad. I said, I'll call him later. And he beat me again, 911. Yeah, we used to do that. You know, 911 say, call me right now. That's right. right. I get up. I get on the phone. I said, what's up? He said, hey, nigga, listen to this. You know, he's trying to play some music that he's playing in this car. Yeah. And I can hear it. I hear my name, but I couldn't really hear it and yeah, feel it. Yeah. He said, don't worry about a nigga, I'm on the slab on my way to you. So he said, I just left the studio doing this song. Wow. We walked out, we on my way to you. So he came, he and uh, Leroy. Yeah. They drove all the way down to Dallas just to let me hear this song. We went to my apartment. They met me in my apartment. We played that song probably 80 times. Wow. They slept on the floor and on the couch. And got up the very next day and went back to Houston. All he came here for to show you was to song. let me hear that song. Stuff like that got me through it. Come Did on, man. Did you cry when the first time you hear it? Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. I he can saw, imagine. Yeah, it was a trip. The, what he said was so dope. He, it, the way he said it, it was so real. And let me tell you what kind of visionary he is. Leaving the studio, in the car, on the phone, first thing out of his mouth, this the first song on the album. That's how it go. And the album was nowhere near to being completed. He said, this will be the first song on the album. Man, I had Ronnie Spencer here, and he sung that first part. Oh, yeah, I heard yeah, it. Yeah, man. I heard and it. I went down there, what, about a week ago and mm -hmm. hung out with him for New Year's. I never met him. You never met him? I never met him. Because I, if I'd have knew that, I'd have had you here, I definitely would have introduced yeah, y'all. Yeah, because. He's a good but, dude, man. Because after, after that, like you say, a lot of stuff as black men and just people, period, back then, you know, you, you deal with stuff. And you don't know you're dealing with something. That's it. You know, I'm just, I'm feeling down. I don't feel like fucking with somebody. Yeah. But, you know, you don't know you're going through a depression. Yeah, that, that's know, like it. Like I was talking that's to my boy Bilo, you know, about around the time Chad died. Yeah. And the feelings we, he and I were having. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't realize that what we were what going you were through going was a depression. Through. Man. Because when that happened, I have to, look, I, I'm jumping the gun. No, but no, I'm but just no, no, the no, fact. No, you, but but, but I'm, I'm just saying, like like you you brought up Belo when Belo was on here, he gave us some dope stories too, and he also lived with with uh, Pimp C. Yeah, in Atlanta. A, in Atlanta, yeah, yeah. and and just the stories he told, man, was just 
enlightening for us, man. Yeah. And I don't know if they ever were told. I know that I don't know how many, I've never seen him in an interview, but he came here and blessed our platform. Oh yeah, man. I watched and that was a dope interview. You know man. I watched that. <laughs> Stop but it. but you, man, like I said, uh when you when when you have to go through something like you went through and then you still able to overcome and you guys yes. uh that would have been a, what at ninety seven, ninety six when he Yeah uh when he dropped yes, that. Yes. Cause it, I'm around, I'm riding, riding yeah. dirty, yeah, riding, riding dirty, dirty. Yeah. yeah. I listened to that uh, that song over and over again. Actually, that that yeah. that song right there, it hit home early on. Yeah, and even pimp, I mean, Bun cried when after Pimp died to that song. You could see it was hurting him. Oh yeah, that one day you hear and then you go on resonates so mm. much with life, and it it just continues to keep going through. Just it's every, chilling. It, it, it's it's pretty much not something that it's t it's timeless. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's timeless. It'll it'll be here forever. There's a video on uh, YouTube of the funeral. Yeah, <sighs> when that song come on, wow, it give it a different different feeling. Yeah, and it's got us carrying the casket. Yeah, <sighs> man, I, I hey man, that that's my boy, man. Like I said, I used to love listening to him. I was hurt when he was locked up. Yeah. You know, uh, let's you. talk about that a little bit because that had to take you by storm. When he got locked up. You want that story? Yeah, I got to have that. Like, that's a core thing, a core moment for me. Yeah. Because I was with him. You know what I'm saying? Kind of closed me off to the music because I cut for him so much. Yeah. Just to, I listened to to UGK. That was my mm -hmm. that was my thing. Uh, I met Bun a couple of times, like I always say, but I never had got to meet him. Never, we went. I don't know if he was with me at the car show. I I seen him perform at the car show, but yeah. I never got to talk with him. Right here in Dallas. Yeah. Oh, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I remember there. that we had the dicky suit on and yeah. coming through walking, just walking that stage. You man. mean right after he got out? Yeah. Yes. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I was happy about that. Yeah, I remember. I yeah, that day. yeah. So how did you, how did that end up happening? What was going on? You can talk about it now. Pimp's no longer with us. As far as how he ended up getting jammed up and all that good stuff. How did he end up getting jammed up? Yeah, oh, when he went to jail. Yeah, when, oh, and, and what and, happened and then, that made him? Yeah, and then I'm gonna what, tell you what he told me. Of course, that's okay. where I wanted from from your standpoint. Okay, this is what he told me. Initially, the, you mean the what, what put him on probation? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is what he told me. He said, "I'm in the mall. I'm in a certain store." Okay. He said, I'm talking to the store associate, okay? And the store shows, you know, he's you know, he's being friendly. He knows who I am. Yeah. You know, everything's cool. So he finishes helping me, and he goes and starts helping two girls. And in his excitement, he says, hey, y'all know who that is over there? That's PMC. And the girls. Of course. Oh, fuck that motherfucker. Wow. I don't fuck mm. by no PMC. And if the Chad I know. Let me tell you something. That high-pitched voice. You ain't going to talk talking. No. And those and, the, and with it being high pitch, he cutting you with every word. Yeah, yeah. And so he rip him up with the, with his words. He leave out the store. And so he said, I go into a different store. And I'm, as I'm in this different store, it's like 15, 20 minutes later. He said, those so same young ladies walk in with three or four guys. So in his mind, they go get some guys to come after him. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm strapped in the mile, Bobo. You know me. You know, so he pull up, show that he's strapped. And as he does it, he says, oh, shit, I shouldn't have done it. Put it down. He said, I start head toward the door. They go tell him all security. He says, by the time, as soon as I hit the door, Bobo, bam, they grab him, hit his head all on the door. You know, they grab him. It's two, like, like two of them. Grab him, hit his head all on the door. They say, hit his head on the cop car, everything. Yeah, because, you know. Hell in it. Yeah, so he go to jail. And this is what I learned. A lot of things I, I learned from that situation. Uh, fast forward, Christmas, Christmas time. So this is, uh, has to be Christmas 2000, 2000, 2001. I'm at my mom's house. I get a phone call. Well, excuse me. No, nah, yeah, I get a phone call because I got a cell phone. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. It's pimp. It's, he's like, bro, you know, my album is already out, right? With the bitch get up off me. He's like, say, man. I want to talk about that too, but. We got a show tonight. Chocolate City, first show UGK has done in four years, first show in Houston in, since I was there. You know, mm -hmm. I said, he said, we need you to open. Wow. I said, when? Right now. <laughs> so I got to go tell my family that I got to go. So I call up all my people, pop, 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 pop. We hit the road. We go down to Houston. It's, it's a beautiful situation. Come back. Okay, let me tell you, this show is Bobo Luciano opening and the middle fingers. And then it's UGK. Mm -hmm. So then we come back, you know, the next week, mama called me. Yeah. Mama she said, baby, 
um, talked to Chad. We just got this 30 city tour booked. Okay. I said, okay, wow. You know, we're going to pay. We're going to pay you. I ain't going to tell you how much you said we're going to pay you. But it's, it's, it's one thing about one, one it's thing. lucrative. Oh, my God. One thing about Chad and that whole family, UGK family, they were not stingy with the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when when I was the hype man, they paid me like a, like I was out there. Like an yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, like an artist. You know, I had my own room. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have to uh, sleep with the DJ, sleep with the dancers. None of that. None of that. Oh, boy, you got your own room. And this is your money. I'm like, oh, shit. After the show, go in mama room, get the money. So, yeah, we, so so we do this show. She tell us, you know, we're going to do this. 50, so we're going to do 15 shows, get the bread, come back to Houston, and we're going to shoot Look At Me video. I said, oh, wow, that's going to be dope, mama. I said, uh, who's going to shoot it? Boontown. Yeah. Oh, so Boontown living up here. I said, that's going to be wild. I said, well, mama, since the uh, camera's going to be there and everybody going to be in present, it's going to shoot Biscuit or Poppy hey. video at the same time. <laughs> she said, let me call Chad and ask him. She called Chad. She called me right back. He said, that's a pff, genius. So next week, he went to uh, for his court apartment and never came out. Wow. wow. And never came back out. Well, that was a long word. Four years. Yeah, four years later. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and, and I know it did hurt you. Uh, did you, uh, you 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 did take trips down there? Where? To, to no, I never, he told you me never, no, he told me don't come. Okay. He told mm. me I wrote him almost I know I wrote him once a month at least. And mm-hmm. he wrote back. Oh, every yeah. Yeah, I got come on now. Yeah, so I, and every time I said, Boy, let me put some money on your books. He wouldn't take it. He wouldn't take it from me at all. Because wow. I got people putting money on my books, but well, I know you're trying to make it. I said, okay, if you need it, let me know. I got it, and that's how it was. So. Wow, that's that, that's dope, man. Uh, that that he understands because I I can relate. So but, you know, I, I hear a lot of people on you know because I, I watch you, yeah, I follow yeah. you, and, and and people say this, and you've heard this from everybody, and it's true. There was a difference between Chad, and there was a difference mm-hmm. between PMC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one of the only people that I. That's know what runs run uh, run. Spencer, Spencer said yeah, that it was different. I'm one of the only people that I, I don't think Chad ever went out for. Him. Really? Yeah. Everybody. You and probably Runny because Runny said the same thing because you all yeah yeah. He, that, that, and I was older. I was that's like what the, it is. I was like that. No, don't do that. Don't do that, bro. Bro, you tripping? Yeah. I was that on his shoulder. You know, and that's why he always liked me around because when he got to tripping, I, man, you tripping, Pim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you tripping. And he'll listen oh, to you. Oh, what? What? That's yeah, dope. it was, it was, it was different. Um, so when you, when you, um, when, when he was down there and he gets ready to come home, you know, I know now this is where the celebration begins, but I know it's hard as y'all go through it. Oh yeah. Um, Bumpy did a splendid job doing the Free the Pimp C campaign, yeah. man. You didn't know it was that big. Until after it was over, I but knew. Like, I liked it. it. I, I seen it. it. I seen I loved it. it. I seen it. And I, I respected it. It was going of, hard too. He was going hard. He was ripping was everybody. Hard. Everybody was trying to get him on verses and everything. Everybody else. was getting and, it. And, but but every time he ripped them up, yeah, the free PMC. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That free PMC was killing them, man. Yeah. The t shirts and everything. It, it was just on point the way he done that. And I always, I always think about that time because that was a time in itself where, and then I felt so bad when pimp passed because I knew it was like a double whammy to burn because he already had went through oh, so much, man. I thought about that as well. You did, did Oh, you? my God, yeah. You, and you can kind of hear it in that next, uh, what is it, not the trilogy, but that two trill album. Yeah. But uh, He wasn't passionate on no, that. No, no. He, he even not, alluded to it on, on that yeah, show. Like, yeah, it was, was tough passionate. on everybody, man. Oh, my and, God. But like I said, for him, the way he was campaigning for it and then to not see it come to fruition. Yeah. Cause he had already, I know no. in his mind, he he could see this big picture happening. You don't know. I had just come back. I was going through a divorce at that time, right? Mm-hmm. And I called him and I said, "Say, I'm going through a divorce." Blah blah blah. He said, "Oh man, why the fuck that bitch." You know, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> come on down here with us, Bobo. Da, 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 da. I said, "Well, man, you know, I gotta." I always used to take my vacations from the car dealership. Um, First week of October because of the fair. Yeah. I always did. Yeah. And he said, come on down. And so he said, I'll, you, you can stay at the uh, my high rise on West Timer. I'll leave the keys for you at the front desk. 
So I went down there. And um, when I got there, he was still there. Come on upstairs. He was still there. So we went to Port Arthur. I stayed in Port Arthur like two, three days. You know, that was an adventure. Wow. You know, yeah, that was an adventure. I got to live, uh, stay, sleep on his couch for two, three days. And Queenie, not Queenie, I'm tripping. No. Hey, Queenie. <laughs> yeah, man, that's bun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shannara. Yeah. Shannara uh, drove me back to Houston. And so that's when I stayed at the high rise. Then I hung out with Bun and Queenie after that. Wow. But it was, uh, that's when he gave me the, uh, the shirt, yeah, a couple of other trinkets yeah. and things like that, and then fast forward to um, Thanksgiving. So that was October, and I can, uh, bro, <laughs> the stuff, bro. Let me the ask. stuff that he was telling me and playing for me, and the phone calls he was taking in front of me. This is what he was planning before Drake. He was playing in a, a double CD, okay, half rap, half singing. See, Chad stayed away from that singing yeah. early in 92, yeah. 93, yeah. 94, 94. Yeah. He didn't like that. I heard him say something about his high-pitched voice. He didn't he really did like not it. Like, for some reason, he just didn't like didn't singing. Like yeah. And I remember when he sung, a lot of people didn't know that that was him singing on uh, Having Things. Yeah, and then I when did. I, you know before I the video yeah. came out, and I said, bro, that's... That thing was hard, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... He, he, I don't know why he shied away from that so much, but by that time, he had embraced it. He had started to embrace it. Mm -hmm. So he was going to do a song that was going to be produced by Timberland. This is what he's telling me. Okay. Produced by Timberland, him and Justin Timberlake. Hey. Was that going to go to the hemisphere? Man, come on, man. That thing will still be rolling right now. And he told me, he said, Bobo, I want you to quit your job. He said, come on back down here with me. We're about to hit this road. I got a radio show. Cause I, you know, I had that dirty south block party. I don't know. We was doing that for eight and a half years, and I had already, because of the divorce and everything that I was going through, I was planning on retiring because I, you know, I had two daughters at that time, so I got to play that. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was on Saturday night from ten to midnight. I'm like, who gonna watch my kid? That's it. You know, so I'm a single father at that time. I'm planning, planning this all out. So, um, he said, I got a radio show, and I never met this gentleman, but he said it's gonna be you. You're gonna control the boys and. PMC and Lil Duvall, and it's gonna be on XM. Hey, wow. I said okay. So he comes down for Thanksgiving. We do the show at um, Blue. Okay. You know we chop it up. We stay together. You know, and he he was supposed to come. You know, stay with me at my house that night. And then he said, "No, nah, uh, some 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 soft so showed up for him. He wanted to stay at yeah. the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so he stayed at the hotel. And um, eight days later. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah, it yeah. Was just after, yeah. So. That that was that, that was crazy. Yeah, and, and, and he and I were. See, Chad was. I did the first interview with him out of jail on the radio. I think I heard that. I listened I to it. I listened to it. Man, we got some classic interviews. The most classic one we, was the one the where he's standing outside by the fence. I'll show you some pictures from that night. Yeah, but we did some interviews, man. Oh. They on uh, YouTube. YouTube, yeah. They on YouTube. Uh, some people recorded and they they uploaded it on YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. And he would just call me anytime he wanted to vent, and he'd be like, "Bobo, I want to da 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 da." And he get on. I let him get on the air and just do his thing. He he did that twice before he did the Atlanta interview. Yeah, I heard that and one he too. Had that some is classic. He did one where he really went off on Skip Cheatham. It's on. Uh, I think I heard the one tonight. I listened to that one yeah. before or earlier today. But yeah. let me ask you about that bitch. Get up off of me, man. How did you guys? Because I, I want to just hear the story on, on, on how he ended up making that song with you or okay. for you. Or, or how did you guys end up doing that? Okay. Um, the gentleman, his name is Ron. Okay. And there you go. Okay. Yeah. The same Ron. Right. That through the uh, concert. Mm -hmm. Wet and Wild. He was, um, big, he was a big boy. Yeah, big big boy, and but he was quiet. A lot of people didn't know, it. and I had grew up with him from junior high school on. So mm -hmm. he um, he um, wanted to get into the music industry, and so he said, "Okay, you know." I told him he knew I was my affiliation, and so you know we this is it. You know we we worked out all the details. We worked out all the paperwork. Come on down, Chad. So Chad gets to my house. Ron shows up to give him money for his room. Yeah, right. So we get the money for the room. He don't even come upstairs to meet him. I go downstairs, just get the bread, and we come back up. So we got studio that night. I can remember we were scanning um, Curtis Mayfield's uh, discography, trying to find a sample. Okay. And so he said, oh, I got one. Don't ask me what it was, but because 
too many blunts away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> too many, too many blunts since then. Yeah. Well, anyway, he just found like a little baseline. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He said, this is the one. He was funny like that. And so I can remember he made that beat at uh, Dub One Studio standing up in about 15 minutes. Wow. And the guy never showed up to come pay him. Run. Never paid for the studio session, never paid for nothing. And so he looked at me and said, well, fuck him, Bubba. You can just have a beat. Oh, I looked at him and said, I can just have it. He said, yeah. And then I, could just, I sat on that beat for about two years Wow. before we recorded it. Yeah. And the night from all the stuff happening from I Know You Strap, that song? Yeah. We were in the uh, presidential suite at the uh, Anatole when we came up with the hook. What's up, Black? You know, out of Memphis. Okay. You know, female Cut, rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my homegirl. She was she was there, Pimp, me, and DJ Bird. Okay. We in the uh, presidential suite, and we come up with the bitch, get up off me hook. And then we go to the studio the next day, and then that's when I let budget down. Wait. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So l let me ask you this. Uh, it was a known fact that on the, uh, 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 and, and he may never may not have even said nothing to you about this, but when he uh, did that uh, big pimping with Jay-Z. Yeah. Did you ever talk with him about anything about that? That no. Whole? I'm gonna tell you what, what what he told me and what I do know. Yeah. And I don't know how true it is, you know. But this is what he said. I said I do know, and I said oh, no, I tell you, <laughs> that shit contradicts. <laughs> but um, at that time, I don't like talking about stuff like this because I'm married now. And at that time, I was married to someone else. Okay. So, so anyway, um, uh, again, I'm at work at Sears. I'm working You're a working man, spot. boy. Oh, they, yeah. they love him. He over oh. at Sears making that money. Oh too. yeah, I did. Give it a loop. Give it a loop. Get up. <laughs> Break yourself in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I um, I'm working at Sears, and by the time I get home, um, well, the song was already out. You know, you know, I I remember being at the spot on Greenville. I'm a fan. I'm gonna rewind. We at the spot at Greenville. UGK is on concert, and um, I'm standing right there by the DJ. I'm in the DJ booth as they're performing and we I'm rolling weed in the deep yeah, yeah, yeah. and handing it to him on stage <laughs> and then he say Bobo tell Bird to give you that album and then I look at this record and he say Big Pimpin' by I say why <laughs> this doing the show yeah. you know I say why and so they play it that night I said, oh, so okay so fast forward to I'm at work right he calls and uh, well excuse me I get home and my wife say at that time my ex-wife says uh your boy been trying to call you all day. I said, what? So I called him back, and he said, man, I had Jay-Z right here trying to talk to you, man. I'm down here. I said, oh. He wanted Jay to talk to you. I don't know me. why. Just wanted him to talk to you. I don't know why. I don't know if Jay said, tell me about the dude from the uh, yeah, song. Yeah, that song. Yeah. Let me talk to him. That was know. the album that really yeah, touched Jay-Z. Yeah, I don't know. But why? he wanted you to, you and him to talk. I don't know why. I never asked Chad why or uh, what made me come up or anything. Just the fact that he said Jay Z wanted to talk, to he, me, or he wanted me to talk to Jay Z. To Jay Z, yeah, one, one of the two. two. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's dope, man. That that's dope to have those type of memories and know yeah. that you that those conversations went on between you and Pimp. Oh, and, he got me. I talked to Chad back then. Oh shoot, for, for, I would say when we befriended each other, if we didn't talk every other night, you know, I know you hear a lot of people say, "Man, Chad like to call those late nights." Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. He called those late nights and wouldn't let you off the phone. Mine was every other night. Hey, mine was every other night. Sometime for a long time, it was every night. He just want to talk said, to you. You don't want to call like this. But then the one, the times that I'm too sleepy, I'm pretty sure it's when he God, called so every night. <laughs> <laughs> he so, called me every night, man. So yeah, just, he, I, I don't so know did what he, he like the pimping, the big pimping song. Uh, did he uh, love it? He never said he anything never said to either. me. He yeah. just told me, you know, everybody knows the story about him not not wanting to not do wanting it. to do it. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to know if he after it happened. He didn't embrace it, you know. Chad, but he was doing so much, you gotta man. Move on to Chad the next was a different thing. dude, bro. Move on to the next thing. Chad was a different dude, bro. He was truly underground king. Mm -hmm. He never, ever wanted to give bad impression to his fan base. Yeah. He always wanted to stay street and southern in Texas. That's it. That's what that's what lock us in, right? I there. mean, he represented for Texas and Port Arthur. In the South. Yeah. Harder than anybody I know. I ain't never seen nobody do it like yeah. that heard, in my uh, life. Yeah, I heard uh, DMD say he would. I remember the first time I heard him rapping like that. In other words, he must have had a, a different, style different style. Yeah. At yeah. first. 
And when he said, I heard him rapping like that, that must have been that Southern Brawl. Yeah, he wasn't trying to hear it at nah, that point. Oh, man, but that Southern Brawl is what made what, us. Ma- what ma- yeah. Mm-hmm. Did, so early on, he dealt with uh, Master P and him a little bit. I can remember that. Um, yeah, remember. They had some differences. We don't have to get into all that. But uh, did you remember some of those relationships and some yeah, of those times? I remember doing the show in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. We did a show in Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, this is the only time that I didn't have my own room. Okay. So I don't know what happened, but they put Bird and myself in the same room. But the room was huge. Okay. And instead of twin beds, each one of us had king size king beds size bed, yeah. in the room. Wow. And so after the show, I can remember this. This is weird. Um, Smoke D. Smoke D had just got out of jail. He came by the room. He had this. CD at the time. And it was Master P's first CD when he laying down. You yeah. Know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And we didn't have no music, so we had a party in our room, you know, with the bops. And so <laughs> so all the girls came by our room. We didn't have no music, so we put that CD on and just playing over and over. And over. He said, man, this dude here jamming, jamming. Fast forward, <clears throat> about um, two months later, we do a show. I can't think of the name of the town in Louisiana. Well, we meet this guy called uh, Money. Okay. Money, and he's, he was starting a group. It was called CC Waterbound. Okay. Well, Money's cousin was Moby Dick. Okay. So Moby Dick was the the introduction to Master P. Mm-hmm. So about a month later, Chad's like, hey, this guy's, you know, he's, he's sending for us to come down and do a verse with him. So that's when you heard the first which uh, one, which one was it? Because it was a, uh, it was a few of them. I got uh, four eighteen wheelers from back to front. Yeah, that, that boy used if to. If I had old. a sweet, yeah, for every bitch that I fucked, he I, killed that. Yeah, that one. bitch from the stop stack G. That one. That one. That one. That was he the came one. Straight to my house. That thing, from he, the and he had the best verse on it. Uh, my opinion, uh, by far. Come on, when he when now he see got you on, gave me up for every yeah that one. I know exactly which one. He used it. to be so. Conscious about his rap because he, everybody was on bond as far yeah. as lyrics. Yeah. And when I moved in with him, he said, Bubba, I'm gonna do something to you that you're gonna get tired of. I've already mastered these beats. So let me let me rewind. I finally get inside this house and realize that this boy got at 18 does have he a got, house. He do have a house. You go yes. that. <laughs> and everybody, everybody. And his house. Well, everybody that know Pimp. And he allowed to come in his house, know about the weed room. So we got the weed room in his house. And my room was across from the weed room. It was the weed room, the bathroom. The bathroom was where they recorded, uh, uh, I think, Break a Mouse, some, and all that stuff. Master P was in there. Yeah. And my bedroom was that bedroom right there. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, he's, a, boy, he's a Leo, so he, he rolled up on the house one day and knocked. He didn't know nobody, really. <laughs> oh, at Pimp House? Yeah, he said, he, so. but he said he got to hit the blood and then he left. You remember that? That's the house. Oh, that's uh, all the joy or whatever it you was. You know about him and uh, Blue Light getting into it? No, uh what, what mm-hmm. happened? Well, you know Blue Light is from the, the other rapper on Short Texas. Uh, okay, it's, okay. It's real kite. Yeah. That, See, when, when, I moved to, when I moved to Port Arthur, it was a civil war going on. UGK Posse against that clique. Okay. And they had just jumped on Bun in the club. Wow. And so that night I got there, we was going to the club. Yeah, to figure out what if it was a problem, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was. Uh, I remember moving to Port. We moved. I moved to Port Arthur. They said, "Come to Houston. We got a show, and then we go after the show. We just so I bought all my bags and hey. everything to the show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that, that's how that went. I had my partner drive me to Houston, and then I rode with them back to to Port Arthur, and then that very night is when we went to the uh, went to the club. But but, you, but but I know you and Pimp was real solid, but how how do you how do you think Pimp's and Bun's relationship was and how did you how did you like the way they I know the music was solid. Always. You know, but just how vibing with them, riding with them, dealing with them, how was that? Um I mean they're brothers. They're brothers. They're brothers. I mean brothers have Issues at yeah. times, brothers. Yeah. I mean, ain't, everything ain't always hunky dory. Yeah, but, but then they that, were brothers. Yes. Every time it came down to it, you better not say shit about pimp to bond. You, you better, better not say, say nothing about bond to pimp. Like, yeah, and, and it was always and it, any friction was always behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah. That's why when I heard something about the UGK posse getting into it one time in Houston after he had died, it ran me so hot. Yeah, because I was you like, knew that wasn't the way it go. Yeah, hey, seventeen. You know, come on, bro. And I called him, I said, bro, what are y'all doing? Yeah, but because you got to understand was, they went through a lot, though. That's a lot to lose pimp. But to get into it each other? Yeah, in, but in they... public? 
Yeah, no, nah, that's bad. In public? At yeah. A, at a concert? Yeah, that's bad. No, nah, bro. That's bad. No, nah, man, that's just like them dudes. But they hurt. The sideline. But they hurt. They hurt. But and I hurt. guarantee you, when you lose a pimp, that's a big loss, man. You say that, but I know the, the real. You in, you in the midst of it. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't there. Yeah, but you know what's going I on. I know what Chad yeah. told me about people. Every, everybody that was around Chad after he got out of jail, I knew why they were around Chad. Yeah. Because he told me why he was you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he I, I, I in never release some of that information. No, no, I get it for for their feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, no, I, I get it. I get their it. Feelings, I you know get it. Right. Yeah, but some of them, you know, like I mean, I'm not cool. I don't have any allegiance with him. But like the 17 cat. Yeah, know? yeah. I, you know, he told me the situation why he was run. You know, the thing about Chad, he was big time opportunist. Yeah, and it was about that bread. Yeah, and the thing, and see. People in the UGK posse, you know, everybody was waiting on their album and their opportunity. Who's going to be next? And the yeah. reason 17 got put in front of everybody, this is from Chad. He had his own money. Yeah. He bought his way in. Yeah. yeah. Like, here, Chad, do this for me. Just yeah. To, you I want to be a part of something. Yeah. Try to get my set and my And that's all up. it was. Yeah. And yeah. that's all it was. It was a business opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the, the shit about the protege and all yeah. that, yeah. all that came out the Chad died. Yeah, Chad yeah. never called him that. Yeah, Steve Belo was the protege. I know that's what Bun said. Steve Belo is the protege. Yeah, by far. Yeah, I met Steve Belo through Chad. Through Chad, and that was how you going to introduce me to somebody from my city? <laughs> and, and that's exactly how. I, that's what I said to him. How the fuck you going to introduce me to somebody from my own city? City. Yeah, but they had met through Louisiana. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he told a story on yeah, here. He yeah. told how they met and everything. Exactly. It was a dope story as well, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but y'all all clicked after that, and and yeah. I see you and Steve Belo still oh, maintain a relationship. Oh, that's my brother. Yeah, that, still my he brother. called me. He was like, man, you got to do Bobo. I said, who the hell is Bobo? <laughs> he said, my man Bobo. I said, I don't say nothing else, nigga. Get that nigga to me, man. <laughs> but no, nah, man, um, the thing I, I can attest to is that, um, you know, you guys are, 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 are the you what make Texas what it is. When you look at what the foundation, I'm talking yeah. about, OG, I'm talking about Ron C. I'm talking Nemesis. I'm yeah. talking about UGK. Yeah. I'm talking about, um, man, it's a bunch of them, though. I even say, uh, for show you shade the DJs all that yep, stuff man yep. uh, even Dr. Rock man oh, just yeah. when you would come and hear those uh, I hate to go to work so, oh, so, yeah. come yeah. on man you yeah. know yeah. We, we can't forget about the foundation man you know what I'm saying but let me tell you something about that I'm getting my I'm glad I got this platform yeah a lot of people in this area always say well why Dallas can't pop mm -hmm. what's the difference between Dallas and Houston Houston mm -hmm. yeah the difference between Dallas and Houston is the younger cats don't know the history. You're right. And see, in Houston, they embrace the history. Yeah. And they work with the older people, you know, or at least communicate with yeah. them to learn game from yeah, them. Yeah, it's very, you know? very, very important. Yeah, I remember one time I met Trap. Yeah. I know Trap Mama. You know, yeah. I just realized I, I, uh, a Yellow Beezy's daddy was my homeboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that. Was, I remember Yellow Beezy when he was little. Trap boy, and dope. when I saw him, you know how you see somebody say, man, I know that dude face. But I seen him with his daddy as a youngster. Yeah. But I never, he grew up to be Yellow Beezy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Tony. You know Tony, that, so yeah. you was cool with, with hey, Yellow uh, Beezy's dad. Yeah. And, and and that's because that's around our age. That's our thing. That's our thing. That's our thing. The dude um, used to pay me to come to, uh, rap at Suavemente. Yeah. At the after hours. Him see? and Big D. Yeah. Yeah, so his dad was one of those guys. Yeah. He was yeah. one of those guys, uh, yeah. a real, real stomp down. He was a leader, hustler. hustler. He was a hustler, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that's during well, that, is that before players and all that, or after players club and all that? You no, know, that was after players. After club. players. Oh, club. players club. You talking about Carol? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I've been there. Yeah. I'm just, Ooh. I went back. You know what I mean? Yeah, you went back. Yeah. yeah, but but definitely, man. Um, uh, and trap trap boy doing this thing like I said you got I mean I hated what happened with Mo three and all that man but that's still you know that's the history yeah well, uh, I you know it. in the Bible the genealogy is so important you didn't think about it just going back you know yeah. like history is important even the slavery Anything sense is important history. yeah but I don't know why Dallas Dallas don't keep it don't make it an, a, a priority to be important we different up here yeah and I take it from this okay because my mom's from Houston. And I, I spent a lot of time as a as a youngster in Houston. Mm -hmm. And so we come out 45, and we go straight to uh, Third Ward. Mm -hmm. 
And Third War was rough. You know, she went Scott to Sky Street. She, and she, all that. Yeah, she went to yeah, uh, she stayed on Berry right off of Scott. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh uh she could walk to Yates and walk to T S U. Mm-hmm. You know, so and it was poverty stricken. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so then we leave and come get back on forty five heading north. Yes, yeah. And so I thought all of Houston was like that. Mm-hmm. And so Houston was a is a blue collar city mm-hmm. to where a lot of Louisiana people, real friendly, you know, said they don't play, but the people are real you know what I'm saying? They're going to roll up their sleeves and go to work. That's yeah. the work ethic that they got. Mm. Here in Dallas, whew, I hate to say it, I grew up here so I can. A little bit more entitlement. Yeah. A lot of more entitlement, a lot of more small niggas and all that type of shit. And so yeah, I used we to. expect things here because we are Dallas. And we expect things to come to us because we are Dallas instead of going out and working for it. You know what I mean? Those boys in Houston was... They laid the blueprint on how, how to get out there and hit that road as far as um That's what Ronnie said. Ronnie say uh Pimp taught him a lot on how to make money off of shows. Bro, let me tell you. Say Pimp was good at that. He was. I mean the ideas that he would have, you know, I was with Pimp before and I'm I want to talk about something else that I so got a couple soon, of things that just keep popping up for as me. Soon, yeah. I, I wanna, got some things over yeah, here. I'm I'm trickling like can remember, okay. Yeah, I can remember before he really started doing a lot of outside producing, you know, and that type of thing. When he just produced for himself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When, he, when he moved to Atlanta was when everything kind of really popped. Yeah. And he's, he, they, they, him and Bun called it rap hustling. Okay. That's what they called it. Um, I heard, I know, I met the guy one time at the funeral. And so I'm not gonna bite my tongue. I heard a couple in it. I heard this guy say this a couple of times. So I know this is what he really feels. Mm-hmm. But uh, David Banner. Okay. David Banner has this impression that Pimp C didn't know how to run the drum machine. And he taught Pimp how to run the drum machine. Really? Yeah, I've heard him say that a couple of times. He didn't know how to run a MP. Okay. Because the MP came out while he was locked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But man, he and I used to walk up in the studio with that ASR 10 and the R8. And kill most, everything you heard from UGK pretty much in the in those the uh super tight yeah. and the uh um uh uh Ryan uh, toward the swallow or, or, yeah, toward, yeah, toward, Ryan Dirty. Dirty. Yeah. yeah came out of Sand Jack, right? A lot okay. of it was recorded in Sand Jack on that ASR ten mm-hmm. and that R eight. And we used to walk up in the studio with that with those two pieces of equipment and everybody used to be like, Where's everything else? <laughs> This is all that's needed. That's all you need. This all this boy need. You heard me say he cracked out that that beat in fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. The boy was he was different. He was a little different, bro. Yeah. So why why do you think I, it probably because of the musical the, the, the musical? You know, I'm just talking about David Banner feeling that way because of the I age. Don't know. Well, you got the age difference. But what did he think if he made the beat song? They yeah. were they were not keyboard beats. Yeah, but they obviously the way that that, that Pimp could push maybe the speakers. He's, maybe he just wording it wrong, different. He's wearing it way wrong. <laughs> that's that, that's out of line, bro. It's blasphemy. Yeah. For him to say that Pimp didn't know how to run the drum machine. Come yeah. on, bro. Yeah, he yeah. Pocket yeah. full of stones? Woo. Are you serious? One man. Man, come that, on. That that boy, that that boy, I got a pocket full of stones. Everything. Come on, man. And Bonnie tell you that R8. Yeah. And then he gave that R8 to Steve Below. Below Steve Below sat on that R8 the whole time Pimp was in jail. So that's what B-Lo was making his beat song. The, everything, B-Lo was the main producer on my album. Okay. All right. That all right. Trained by the pimp. So, so the pimp definitely could make any kind of beats he wanted to make. Oh, my God. Come on, man, the boy. He's different. Wow. Well, you know, people, well, maybe because, maybe pimp told David Banner something about he helped him to understand that type of beat machine. And that's what you think. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, he's trying you. to hear it. Let yeah. me tell you, bro, because I, I sit back in the and, and why, I mean, have you ever addressed him on it? No, this is this first is me, time. This first is me addressing time. it. Oh, yeah. Put that in your tag. Oh, I'm, like, gonna, I'm okay. gonna tag you. Okay. That's me right there. You're, I'm good you. on that. You're, yeah, let me tell you. A lot of people see. I hadn't been doing no interviews. This is my first. Really? Wow. Yeah, a lot of people. What made you do this? All right, we got to ask that. We the dopest, <laughs> right? We, we this well, is dope, going, man. I, I, this is the thing I'm because saying about the Steve Below. No. Let me tell you about back up to the Steve Bilo. Okay. And I spoke. And I said to him, I said, Bilo, you know what's been going on with you and I? See, I suffer from depression. Wow, he do too, because he's been he him didn't talking about that it. until Til you, you started talking, talking, about, talking about, about it. I said, You ever think that that situation that we went through with him passing is what led us into our depression? 
I said, because at that time, you think about what was going on with me. This is what was going on with me. My record label was right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, two mixtapes were recorded. The album was, uh, second album was recorded. Um, everything, everything was working. Everything was moving. Chad was talking, you know, we were, we, everything was popping. Everything was popping. And then all of a sudden, my business partner go to jail. Mm -hmm. um, couple years. I don't know how long he's going to be gone for. Uh, he's like the executive producer. You wow. know what I'm saying? I was the... I was the the industry connect yeah, the yeah, brain yeah. And, and, and the artist and he was the that was my guy yeah he was the street guy. he was the street guy yeah he was you yeah he was the bag <laughs> watch he yourself. was the bag he done put me in there he, he was, was the bag tell him the truth he yeah. was the bag you know what okay. I'm saying yeah definitely I started going through my divorce that's a lot started going through my divorce um pimp died that's a lot and then my mom got diagnosed with um diabetes. And Alzheimer's at that time, or dementia at that yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So all that happened to me in oh. that year, two thousand seven. Wow. Yeah. All all in that second quarter, and then that in that fourth quarter of the year, everything pop 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 hit me, and I'm not knowing. That's before people start talking about depression. Yeah, yeah. Nobody you know talking about mental illness. Well, they are, but they're not not in the black community. Not in the right. black community. Yeah, I know. That's not so for men. true. I'm not yes. for men. Yeah. yeah, man, shake that shit off, nigga. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to yeah, You got to I have. Can't shake it off. You got to have a big boy. Yeah. yeah so it was a bunch of drinking stuff yeah. I didn't need no, to be I'm doing. Do. See, that's what I was yeah. gonna ask you. Yeah. If you, yeah. you know, who saved my life? Who? Right there. Mm. Wow! Right there, and I can believe it because that was, was around the same time. I was. I already been calculating it over here. How did how did she get through to you? Our friendship, we were friends first. Mm. You know, it's God. I I work on faith. Mm -hmm. hey. Everything I've ever done, pretty much all my life, is like if you say if if I'm talking about an adventure, a, a venture, and then you say, "Hey, check this out, Bobo." I feel like God put me here to hear you say that. I think I'm here for a reason or a season. But you didn't wow. get that right away because I I'm sure this is just me making an assumption. I've heard that no. That whenever you are going through all of these things hitting you back to back to back, like any regular human being, they're gonna say, "God, why me?" Yeah, I never did that. I never had self pity. You just the only, thing you I, just the only thing I said why me on was the Chad situation because I didn't know how serious the diabetes and the uh, uh, I didn't care about the divorce. Yeah, I didn't care about the divorce at all. The only thing I cared about the divorce was what was going to happen to my two daughters. Two daughters, because see, she wasn't from Dallas, and I, I thought she was going to try to move my she, and try to try to take my away. kids, and then I ended up with custody of my kids, my wife and I. Yeah, so but, that, but that's me, unheard of. Men are unheard. men are cavemen's too. They, they men know how to hide stuff real well. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll yeah. hide stuff, and we'll still we'll be okay on the surface. Yeah. But then inside, dying. we dying, dying on the inside. I know that, and yeah. and and so I could see how you could hold it in, I even up it. until this time. Yeah, I I it. could see how it could still be a thing to where you still slowly recovering Bro, after all these years. But when did you realize that it was depression? Like how long ago? How long ago it was, baby? I can remember exactly when it Four was. Years, five years. Whenever Black Panther came out, that's I when remember. it was. Yeah. What triggered it? Boy, I was at work going off on everybody at work. I was at home going off on people at the house, and my wife says, listen, baby, you got something. Because every year around November, December, yeah. well, something changed It was always around the same time. His birthday and Something stuff. changed with me. So I, didn't, I couldn't figure it out. And she would just be like, you ever notice that this is happening around this time? And, I, you know, you know, your wife sees stuff in you that you don't yeah, see. Yeah. And so I was like, gee, hey. You need to go talk to somebody, somebody, yeah, or you need to go to the doctor. One of the two. There's no cure for that. Those are your two choices. And I decided to go to the doctor. Dope. And so I'm still on medication to this day. That's good, man. And it, man. let me tell you something. I got a weakness for uh, medicine. Yeah. You know, even through like the X pills thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't take no whole X pill. Give me a half. And I'm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so things that would have tried to normally take people a week to get in their system and work that first night bro she told me she said take the pill because my wife is an rn okay and okay. so a damn good one and so she told me she said take it at night because it's mm -hmm. this is some strong medication and sure enough that night bro it knocked I, you out fuck i feel it's, it's amazing i bought up x pills because i felt like i was rolling yeah i threw the sheets off of me i felt like the bed was moving when i woke <laughs> up the next day 
it looked like a light bulb was off at me. Wow. I went to work apologizing to people, man, when I cussed you out yesterday. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm bro. sorry. That ain't me. That ain't me. Um, yeah, literally. Wow. I went to work and apologized to about four or five people. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, but why did you choose the doctor over going to go talk to somebody? Time. Call business keep you from having too much time. You know, to I, I my time off, I really try to spend with my family. The reason why I ask that because there's a lot of people who go through um, mental illness, depression, all of that. And some people say, well, I can't take the pills. And some people say, I'm going to deal with this by myself. Yeah. Some people say all different sort of stuff. So that I was medicine trying is to figure a beast. Out, yeah. That medicine is a beast. I'm telling you. Wow. Because without it. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Let me. Let, let, I'm, I, well, we gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch, switch gears on it. I had one more question, though. About the mental illness? No. Okay. Where did you get the name Bobo Luciano? Well, Bobo, I've always been Bobo since. From you, your mama? No. Nah, nah, Who my called friends. you? First person who called me Bobo was a guy named Kevin Paul, KP. Why? Because my, cause my arms are flicked. See how my arms are bowed out? Oh. <laughs> and everybody used to always say, you always look like you want to fight somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's Call you Bobo. Bobo. So I was oh. Bobo from a child. And then um, I was doing a guest verse on somebody's record. I can't remember what it was. And I said Bobo Luciano in that verse. Everybody said, that's hot. That's it. Nigga, that's hot. And that's how I get it. Oh, okay. That's how I Let me ask you. I want to go back to Pilgrim. Oh, hold on. Oh. And Luciano, you know, the guy who, he was the one that they gave the, um, the title to the person that organized the mob. Lucky yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's right. And so that's what I, when I came back to Dallas, Pimp sent me, <laughs> Pimp sent me here on a mission. He said, well, I want you to go back to Dallas. I want you to get your shit going in music. And then we're going to start a movement. And at that time, Dallas was UGK's biggest market. Yeah, yeah, yeah we just talked about that. I mean, but it was Dallas for a long, time. long time. I mean, we we had more concerts here than than anywhere outside of Louisiana. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and so then he told me get some going, and that's what I did. So let me ask you about uh, uh I want I want to ask you about how I know how Steve Bilo met uh, pretty much uh, Chad? Pinch, yeah pimp, um, but but Boosie and him, Boosie and the Webby thing. Yeah, I want to kind of understand how that came to be from your perspective. Well, I really don't know. You because, don't know how he ran let me into tell you. Him. Well, just from what everybody tell me, from what he okay, told me. Okay. You know? See, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That from what he would, what he would, what he, how he addressed it and saying, "Hey, you know, I got to, got Boosie." Well, he never told you about Boosie. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. I, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He just, you know, Chad, man, I got this little nigga, man. He's dope. That's it. You know, that's all we talk about. Yeah. Was, we used to talk about other stuff besides artists. You know, because I, I remember that. when Boosie came. You know, like when he came out. I know I got my first CD from George over there, yeah. and he gave it to me. They had no nothing but Boosie on there. Yeah. I think Pimpsy and Boosie had a song together. I want to say it was a long time ago. Finger fucking with my with yeah. My, it was, yeah. was some. It was something they had Steve together. Below. Yeah. Oh yeah. Finger fucking with my ring. With my, with yeah. My, with my diamonds on. Yeah, but it was a. It was. I think he had a whole CD too. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you ain't never heard that. No. Uh, but listen, <laughs> he, he had a whole CD, and uh, and he just told me that. Pimp C, you know, pretty much rock with with Boosie, and um, I always thought like, dang man, I, Pimp, you, you know, and even Webby, they love they love bringing his name up and yeah. talking about him because of the legacy that he left for them too. Yeah. So it's like even the KLC when he was on here talked about yeah. Pimp Pimp left a piece with Mr. Lee as well. Let me tell you something, because I, I listened to it all. Yeah, he affected he did. everybody that he came in touch he with. Did. It looked like. He did. Everybody. He was a different dude, bro. He was a beacon. And if, if you in a different around, way, yes. each person in a different way. Yes, yes. That's crazy. Yes, yes. And like I say, I, I don't want to, it, 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 it's so much to what you just said. People take stuff and then in their head, you remember I say they, they make these things up, so much to the point that a famous DJ, I can say his name in Houston, he claimed Bobo because he had just lost a little boy in the house fire as well. Really? He said he was the Bobo that Chad was talking about on the song. Ooh. You can't say his name. I, I can't. He said he can. But, you know. Oh, you, okay. You know, I don't want to. But you don't want to. He thinks that. I, and In he, his hold heart. Hold on. You said a famous DJ. Is, does he still, is he still a famous DJ right now? In Houston? Oh, my God, yes. And he thinks that that was 
To yeah. him. If I say his name, you'd be like, what? <laughs> but he did lose a child in, 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 a, in, a, I, in a similar way. In similar but way. that's same dope, time? though, that he would. Mm, I don't same, know. Yeah, because I, that, it would have I mean, to be around the same time for Chad told him me on two to, different occasions. Said the guy approached him and said, bro, thank you for, for doing that song for me. Chad said, bro, it was. And, and when, if did Chad he didn't bust his bubble. Bobo? Huh? No, 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 and, and, but it's if good. Chad didn't bust his bubble. I'm, I'm not gonna bust exactly, his bubble. Okay. and that's that. That's therapeutic for him. Yes, mm-hmm. that's why he, he. What he's saying is he affect people like right. like so much that it crosses over into places oh, yeah. where you wouldn't even imagine. I hear a lot of people say stuff. I'd be like, Pfft. you know the truth, and that's the one that you know about. But imagine how many other people. Might feel that way that yeah. that was about. That's man. what I'm saying. I ain't gonna lie, when he did, he made you feel like that though. Yeah, he made me feel like a pocket yeah. full of stones. He, I was, <laughs> oh yeah, oh I yeah, I was that guy in the beginning. You know, yeah, it was if Chad me. was in Dallas, <laughs> everybody know. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> he made you feel it. Um. I was rolling. Oh yeah, I man, I was a man. Oh, yeah, I, and I was like, man, this dude. Yeah, this is this is all the therapy I need. Yeah. <laughs> it was different. It was because we weren't talking about D. No, uh nobody was the first wasn't one. talking no. about it. When they came out talking about that D, I was like, "That's why I think him and w- when he was saying that about like even about alluding to the fact that it was Jeezy or whoever about Original. fake dope prices and yeah. all that stuff, and not talking about the bad when you just talk about the good. This yeah. stuff was really happening, and yes. I knew because being from the streets, yeah, I felt him on, on uh, you saw it the, feds felt it. the feds Come in on, town man. and all that. That was therapeutic as yes. well and it kept me aware of not getting caught up so much to not watch for the feds to come to the town. <laughs> it ain't all about balling. Yeah. It ain't real. all about balling when you That's right. Like that. When you yeah. really, you gotta be yeah. mentally able to deal with this Everything. as you hustling. Yes. All this, like I say, he was the counselor. He was a counselor yeah. for me. That's, I, now you, hey, you might be helping me tonight. That, that may be why I loved his music so yeah. much because being in the streets, it. it was dangerous yeah. doing all the stuff that was happening during that time and at the end of the day, it made you feel like everything was gonna be okay, and yep. if it wasn't, you knew what you had to face. Exactly, because you think outside looking in, people are oh, they glorifying it, but no, it wasn't a glorification of no, it. Not at all. All they did was say what they did, they had been through, and the pitfalls. Yeah, you make your own choices. Wow, you make your own choices. Yeah, and they could paint some vivid pictures. And let me tell you something. I can remember. I told you about how them boys could rap, and and they would rap about. Real life experiences, and, that's like, right. and you go back to Port Arthur, and you be like, "Damn, that shit did happen. That shit was real." Yeah, that's what that's Mike Jones when he talked about the car getting hit. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, zero gonna ride blue, and I'm gonna ride red. Yes, but that brings up something else. Uh, it brings up that knocking those down. That, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like for him to come home and make that song like that. Yeah, and and to make everybody understand that we have to do better by each other. Um, he was what was that dude, about? Bro. Did he ever talk to you about yeah. knocking doors down? Yeah, he was. I mean, sitting him down like that, you know, it's therapeutic for some people. Some yeah. people go a different way. Some yeah. people do. They get the uh, rehabilitation that they really need. I think Chad really got rehabilitated. He he got to think about, damn, I'm fucking up a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, he he fucked up family. You know, I'm talking about Bun and myself. Yeah. You know, money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, he talked to me about it. So when he came out, you know, well, excuse me, while he was in there, all, none of these artists were out. You have to realize. Yeah. yeah. He didn't know comedian there. He didn't know none no, of no. We were DJ Screw people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. remember the first night I met DJ Screw, Master P came through. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the night I got the Bobo tattoo yeah. was the first night I met Screw, uh, 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 Master P came through. So we were... DJ screw heads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Before the Michael Watts and all that came yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so when all that came out, he was in jail. He was in jail. Well, I take that back. They were bubbling, but he didn't have relationships with them. But when he got out, they had all gone platinum. Yeah. Like Jones, yeah. Flip, yeah. Powwow, Chameleon Slim. You know, so they all have names now. T Row was doing his thing. So they had went from being, you know, small, underground to stars, to beefing. Yeah. And he felt like, why? Yeah, he's like, Bobo, this, what the fuck? They gonna take this shit from us. 
Because he was all about the South. South. That's right. Texas. You know the South is too big. And the whole South, actually. Yeah, he the was whole South, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. That quit hating the South, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that quit hating the South, man. That boy hate, I'm going to say, he he didn't hate the other coast. He, he didn't just, play about he, this one. He didn't play about this one. <laughs> That's what we knew. He did not play about Texas. He didn't play about Port Arthur. And he didn't play about the South. So if you talk down on the south, you's gonna hear it every time. Did you? What did he feel a way? Did anything ever happen that made him feel like, man? Well, he talked about BET. Yep. He talked about all these different places where they was pretty much. He just not, observing. Yeah, they wasn't showing us the shine. Yep. That that we we deserved. He exactly. Felt. And and we didn't need it because the money was coming anyway, right? Not the big money. But the respect was not there. The respect wasn't there. I mean, listen to Outkast. I mean, they were closer to the East Coast. Yeah, when they we say the, the South yeah. got something to yeah, say. Well, with the fact that they say when they got to use, I mean, got to New York, they got booed. Yeah, I mean, the Ghetto Boys got booed. Yeah, I mean, UGK just never went up there to do any shows during those times, those first two albums. So we're down here building this big foundation, Mason Dixon line on down, mm -hmm. and we don't really need them. You can go platinum down right here. here. Lil Flip was one of the one of the ones that opened the eyes of that real fast. Well, Lil Flip, a lot of people didn't know that Lil Flip was the big one out of Houston. You know? He was, <sighs> and I think that was what caused a lot of problems. Lil Flip was a bad boy, yeah, especially when he dropped that Sunshine song. Yeah, yeah, that Sunshine song took him to a new height. Uh, yeah, it broke it, it broke uh, uh, it broke culture barriers. Man, too. all overseas, it transcend culture. I heard him doing an interview the other day on Vlad. I don't know if I can, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, cool. Yeah, but yeah, he um. Yeah, he mentioned that, you know, about how he's certain amount of records here in the United States and X amount of millions overseas. Yeah, yeah, that boy yeah. did that. He did that. Mm -hmm. He did that. Man. But a lot of people didn't. Didn't. They don't know that. Didn't like that either. Yeah, yeah, they don't like that. A lot of people did not like that, and um, you know, I don't know where that came from. There's a few things I probably would say not on camera. But yeah. I know some things that I was like, man. Oh, yeah. I did, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to, but yeah. I felt a way about it. But yeah. the thing I can say, man, is uh, let me say this, because we can go all night. Yeah. Uh, but you and Steve B. Low, man, I'm going to try to get y'all back on here together. That's cool. That'll be a good time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's my brother. That'll be a good time. That's my brother. Um, And, and we can and we can run down through there, too. Oh, yeah. Because we're coming. Anytime you need me, just call me. Man, we've a, hey, we've a, I'm going to periodically have y'all on here. You don't even realize that I'm going to be calling you because... Okay. That's the foundation. Yeah. And I'm 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 old school with it. I just told you about genealogy, so I'm always stay close to the foundation. We need to get these kids listening to this. Yeah, but they do. Good. That's why I'm doing. How many subscribers doing. you got now? Um 20 brag on yourself. 2012 months. That's the I ain't seen nobody do it. And we hit Vlad That's a couple major. of times and we hit that uh hip hop D, DX. That's major, bro. That they we got articles in all of that. Ain't no hating in me. Congratulations. I thank God for it because this you do see the younger people on here. Yeah. You see them rapping. We had Big X the plug last night on here. He's okay. a new guy that's coming up, um, doing Look real well. Him. Look out for him. This area? He in there. He's from mm -hmm. Dallas. Yeah, um, you have uh, a lot of the young. The it's the look. Uh, it's podcasting is a thing right now. Yeah. So uh, we have a platform to where we got the young and the old. Yeah. We got everybody. It, it, national different nationalities. We got a doctor coming Sunday. We got a doctor coming Saturday. We got an NFL player mm -hmm. uh, coming, uh, a retired NFL player coming. Uh, so Saturday, yeah, because so we the don't, we be don't only do music. Oh, we, yeah. we touch on yeah, the everything. Road be, we do everything. Don't so, turn down nothing but your collar. That's mm -hmm. it, because it's, 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 it's helping our it's people. It's helping people yes. through these yes. mics, through these cameras. That's beautiful. So you talked about the foundation a while ago, and you was like, you know, they don't know the history. They don't. This is how they learn it. They don't know by nemesis. Did you hear what I say? Yeah. This I is how you, they learn it. Your boy Trap walked in my job. This is that what I was telling you. And I, I walked up to him. I said, hey, bro, come in my office. And all I said was, you ever heard of a dude named Bobo Luciano from UGK? He said, mm -hmm. no, nah, bro. Never heard of it. I said, man, I just want to say, hey, man, thanks for doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Shook his hand. Kept it moving. But and he if he's on. a smart kid, he would go outside and look up in his phone. Like, he probably did. Trap pretty, sharp. Trap pretty sharp. Trap like, pretty sharp. Yeah. Who you talking about? Yeah. Trap yeah. pretty sharp. So I'm pretty sure he. If you didn't know then, he gonna know now. Yeah, cause I like trap. Yeah. Yeah, I like trap. All of these guys are dope. The main oh, thing yeah. is, as the as the guys who are older who who do embrace the music or who have built the exactly. music, we have to build 
bridges instead of walls. Yes. We have to show these people that we do love them. Yes. And if they have anything, we don't hold no all. It's just like a child that didn't know their parents. Yeah. And and that child finally get to understand that. Oh man, uh, that was who. I, that's who done that. Then you can't get mad at them. You have to embrace them and show because yeah. it's partly our fault. See the yeah. the crack era and all that helped separate everything. You start thinking about uh, TDC and uh, all that stuff. The trap. Think about the traps that was set by some of the. I mean, Craig. It was a Craig Watkins. I went to uh, school with Craig Watkins. Yeah, the ones who helped get get the people the out DNA. of jail with the DNA test. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now think about the, all the falsely accused that was pulled and snatched, and they didn't even k- get everybody. I know. I know. So so we, and, and then we say, well, they don't know the history. They it's don't. a reason. Well, we have to build. We have to build it up correctly. We do. As older guys, man. We do. But sometimes people have to seek out history and their past. You know what I mean? Research. I get it, man. But you, it's just like, well, like sometimes, like us. But sometimes well, these younger kids, I've heard some younger kids say that um, they've reached out to some older, older cats and they don't help. Well, who did they, they reach wanna- out to? <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't that many of us from that era. Mm-hmm. So they, if they didn't reach out to Nemesis, which I know they didn't, if they didn't reach out to Ron C., which I know they didn't, if they didn't reach out to um, Pimpster, the people that were from, you know, I know that era. era. I, everybody you know, know 89, I know. 90, you know, yeah. the ones that laid that original. See, if it wasn't for DJ Snake, none of that music would have even, well, I ain't going to say it wouldn't have ever come to Dallas. It wouldn't have been in Dallas when it got here. When it got here. When it, Yeah, because we were still just, all we had was what K104 was playing and 107.5. And I mean, how many rap songs do you think they were playing back then? And it was all commercialized yeah. rap songs. So to hear... Uh, Run DMC uh, to hear uh, KRS One, and then they bought the uh, Easy E and the NWA stuff on Can O N, and that was the first of that. And no one had ever heard any of this music before in their life. Wow. I know what changed Dallas. I know exactly what changed Dallas. And do you think some of these younger kids might be feeling or saying that back then is a different time? Y'all might not know about the way how things are now. Well, in the music industry, because that's have exactly what they're saying. Lot. That's why they're saying that. I believe that. You know what I mean? And you can't because that's help what your kids. Well, that's what your kids say to you as parents. As parents, and, right? Yeah, oh, y'all don't know shit. Yeah, y'all, y'all didn't even have cell phones back then. That's right. Y'all didn't even have Google back then. But we survived because we have some older rappers who come in who are still in the game who said that like it was hard to change when everything became digital. It to was, get used to that and so forth. You. Well, that's where you go back to the David you. Banner and all that stuff and the, yeah. the, the changing of the equipment. Mm-hmm. I got caught up in that. Yeah. I got caught up in that. I mean, we recently just released all my stuff digitally because right. I missed that wave. Right. I fucked off a lot of money. Yeah. Because of that depression shit. Not thinking, the this shit ain't going to work. You know, that's what I'm thinking, man. Come on. I didn't pay attention. So being a younger kid, they were like, okay, so what do you have to offer me? Just, I mean. Good game. Yeah. The game. Well, um, let me, uh, and, and like, not, not offer, just know about know it. Know about it. So you know can, where you came from, so you know where you're going. And and that respect will take them so much further than what they're doing already. It will hit so hard. Yes, all them think they the grow. first. I think I'm the first one out there. I got more radio played it. Bro, come on. Bitch, get up off me. was in full fucking blast down here. And everybody know it. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't never say anything about it. I don't say nothing because I'm, I'm humble. Yeah, you post it. Well, you know how we do it. Yeah. So the, only time different. Re- the only time they'll research it, they want to sample something and be like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Somebody's going to want to use that song. The, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's coming. It's coming, but it's going to be. It's going to be some money needed. <laughs> it's classic. Yeah, yeah. It's a classic song that I kept close to heart yeah. recently. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's on all uh, streaming, streaming platforms. Platform. Yeah, now, but like I said, I missed that wave for years and years and years and years. You know, so I uh, missed out a lot of money. Yes. It, yeah, but the thing is, man, it, it wasn't about money for me though. It never. It was. I, I, I wasn't rapping for money. A lot of people did. I rap because I love music, and I was trying to help people. I was trying to start a label to help the people. My wife rapped. Uh, uh, I had a group called the Swissle Boys. Uh, Baby Rue, Low Key, I had, you know, Roguish Life Entertainment, we were doing our thing, but I, I was just the person that started it because of the UGK affiliation. Yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? We knew we had an avenue. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, back then, I knew a lot of fucking people. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and we were going to use those relationships 
to better our lives. And that's yeah. why, that's the only reason I did I didn't do it for money. I did it, you know, I wasn't trying to get rich, in other words. Yeah. Uh, it was all about the music to me. I mean, that, that's I was, we was playing my record uh, earlier, and I was, um, you know, was just the scratching in it. I said, you ever heard the scratching in anybody records in Dallas? I said, I did it for the hip hop. Hey. Because I love hip hop. Hip hop. Yeah, and so that's where it's at. With, with, with man, when you come from where you come from and have done what you've done, yeah. you should be very proud of yourself and don't hesitate to conversate yeah. because that's that's how you if grow. they reach out, I come. No, I'm talking about for for yourself, counseling, talking about. Oh yes, yes, it, giving that story that helps that helps you heal. You're the first, but I'm I'm loving it. I'm gonna put it out. <laughs> it might go hard. I can tell you You're right now. You know, the, the thing I can say is we have to do that. It, 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 when you go through something that 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 have you in a depressive state, it's best. You hear people say it's best to talk about. You got to talk about. But see, this is gonna be my therapy, like you said. That's it. I'm still take my medicine. Yeah. But talking to my wife, my family. Yeah. Why well, we don't talk to and me? To my wife, and now man. you got a new friend, E C O E. Man, stop playing. Up, e? man. You no, can, Jamaica. Hey, Miss Jamaica is in the building. Huh. Say, bow, man. Bow, so, bow. so <laughs> be looking for me within the next few months. Lord say the same. I always say the Lord say the same to try to get you and Steve Bilo on this panel again, so okay. we can just talk and have a good time, man, and just uh, reminisce about you know the 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 music. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 changes in the music. Yeah. And he said he fit a do a little Southern Soul. Yeah, I, he's been working on that for a while. <laughs> he doesn't he heard it in the music. He 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 he's saying, but here, this will be the first place he bring it, he told I'm going to tell you some stuff, bro. Steve B. Lowe, like I heard y'all, I heard Bond talking about the uh, Swissers and Dota. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to tell you a story about that, and he'll, t he'll tell you. He first put that song up on MySpace. Really? It was in the little music. Remember, you could put like four or five yeah, songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was on MySpace. He was putting the instrumentals up. And I was listening to this. All this is why Chad in jail. Yeah. Two years, maybe a year before Chad came home. And when I got to that Swiss and Doge, I told him, I said, bro, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I said, that is my shit. I said, that's my kind of music. Wow. And for Chad to come home, and that's the only beat Chad he picked. Boy, that spirit's right there. That's below. I said, below. That's the one right there. Oh, I can't ask that's Zodico. I don't even That's what he said. He said he said he wasn't even gonna send that one when he sent the package of beats the song the beats. I don't know on. why. He said that wasn't the one. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Because the, the kind of music that Pimp and Bun were making, that hustler type of music, yeah, yeah. that was me. I loved it. Because you know, we, yeah, we grew yeah. up doing that black exploitation yeah. stuff. The Mac rest in peace, Max Julian. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, in it? Yeah. Ooh. He said Pimp. The let me see it, all these songs, man. I just think back all the time. How did he come up with that? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the boy was, let me tell you something. Port Arthur. Have you ever been there? No. No, we hadn't been there. Okay, let me we need to go to Port Arthur. You know, we be, we be right the same. down there by it. It ain't the same. Hurricanes have fucked that town off. Really? But, yeah. Shout out to Trilly Polk. Yeah, that's that's Trilly Polk home there. my people down there. That's my, that's my third home. Yeah. That's my third home. Houston's my second Port Arthur. So... I'm gonna say Port Arthur is my second home. Okay, Houston is my third. Okay, okay. Um, but Port Arthur, small. East side and West side. Okay, if you're going north or south, you're coming about a Port Arthur. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So, Bum B is a genius. A, a, a genius. Why do you okay. think Bun's a genius? I I met him. Wait and a he, he's a sharp dude. And Pimp is a genius. Why do you say that? Them boys were 17 and 18. Listen to that stuff they were saying. Yeah. Listen to the detail in the music that that man was playing at 17 years old. If that ain't an old soul. That's a very old soul. That's an old soul. That boy was on Shaka Khan at yeah. 17. That's our music. That, yeah, 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 yeah. We from a different era than they were from. Yeah, yeah. But for him to be on it, come on, man. Yeah. And that, the stuff that never came out, the album that got stolen, Oh my God! You you've heard some of the songs now, like the uh, you ever heard "Smooth Slanging"? I gotta go back and nothing find but that. smooth. Yeah, slanging. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that Bun B solo yeah. and that uh, Menage a Trois. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he gave me Menage a Trois. Wow! He said, you could have it because the label didn't clear none of that, so he said you could have it. I was just gonna rap the same lyrics, but I just once it you know once it went. By the time I started working on music, I wasn't gonna use it. Yeah, it was yeah. a couple years later, but yeah. Man. That boy had an old soul. And you so for, them, for those two to be in that town, 
two geniuses and find each other and create history like they did is amazing to me. Wow. I mean, because Bone could have went with a different producer. And yeah. Pimp could have went with a different rapper, which yeah. they did at first. Yeah, they, I but they found each other and created history, bro. Wow. And their Man. relationship, like I say, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. At the same time, they had, you know, everybody had everybody their back got and me. It was, never was nothing major. No, it was no, no, fuck you, Pimp. No, no. None of that. None of that. That's you know? business too. Yeah, a business. lot of it business, and you got personal. All that mixed up. Oh in yeah, one, so. yeah. So yeah. ain't nobody gonna get along. For real. Well, man, hey, man, um, do you have anything else? No, sir. Man, let me tell you something, man. We love you. No, you too, bro. And we're going to always reach out to you. Thank you. Um, we're going to say, hey, man, are you okay? Is there anything we can do? Oh, you know, that's what, you. That's, what pe- that's what real people do. And I'm country. So, yeah, and too. then she's Jamaican. So, well, it's my a, family's it's a from mixture. Texas. Really? Yeah, Tyler. Redland, Tyler. Oh, Texas. man, that's I, I, right now. I, I, yeah, I know where you're at. That's, yeah. I, I interviewed uh, Freeway. I went all the way to LA and interviewed Freeway Ricky Ross, and he's oh, yeah. from, he from Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good people. Good people. Yeah, good people. Red clay dirt. Now, yeah, baby. <laughs> Say, man, thank you for coming on Boss Time 101, man. man. Hey, before I go, I want y'all to check, uh, you know, I started my thing, you know, All Hearted Dale Party. You got to say, yeah, your yeah, plugs, man. like, well, yeah. how can people find you? Yeah, just get on, you know, All Hearted Dale Party, AHDP, and uh, we on Facebook. We Instagram. On Instagram. What's that thing called, baby? The Anchor app. Hey. Uh, yeah, we using it all. You know, y'all can Spotify. <laughs> Spotify. Y'all check us out. We, we fairly new, but we doing our thing. You know what I'm saying? Man. We got, you know, we what we do, we do old school. Yeah. Everything from the beginning of rap to probably about 2005. Okay. And so we, you know, the stuff we love to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so we got mixes. You know, me, I'm, I'm on there acting a goddamn monkey. Already. You know, it's, 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 it's beautiful, you know. So we, we got probably about six, seven episodes in. We just doing our thing, man. man. I'm gonna be shouting that thing out, man. Yeah, thank you, man. I hope and, uh, like I said, we gonna we gonna try to always link back up and and do some periodically to as the platforms grow. Yeah, yeah. And then next and next thing you know, uh, we a thing down here in the Dallas. Yeah, market. thank you. Yeah, that's what we got. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah I got to, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. And, uh, you man. keep your wife. I'm gonna keep my wife. And hey, we gonna to have my wife, to. Car. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm shout out my wife to the out official time. Miss Jamaica. Yeah, Wait. Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica. <laughs> Michael, Michael. <laughs> you well, know about Michael, Michael? In Houston? No. What? You don't what, know about what, the Michael, Michael? It's called Jamaica, Jamaica. That was a club in downtown Houston. Just go Historic. in. Historic. Mm. That's, check that, that out. That's your people. Make right? a maker. Hacking a fool. Make a maker. Check it, Sunday man. Sunday nice. <laughs> and Bobo Luciano is in the building. Um, do you, uh, what What do you think? Do you think we did a good job with him? did an amazing job. You think so? Yes, man. Man. Well, if we didn't, he'll be back anyway. We're going to do better right next now. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I got a lot more. <laughs> you scratched the surface. Hey, no, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what we wanted to do. Because like I said, the stories have to come out. People need to. And I wanted to ask you about Pimp's son because he's yeah. incarcerated yeah. right now. Young Corey. I, I, yeah. I, 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 to see that because that's that that generational curse. That hurt me. That's a cycle. That hurt me. Did you hear what I just oh, said? Yeah. That hurt me. And it had to be tough on him. I always, I told he's a Leo, the same thing. Coming up under that shadow yes. and being looked upon a certain way, yes. and people looking at you and 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 putting things on you that you may not even be won't even deal with. He don't deserve with. it. He didn't deserve it. I mean, he didn't ask to be born like you know to PMC. Exactly. He's, just, he's a person though. But I definitely I thought about that. I'm like every time I think about that, I ask Ronnie about that too. It's like man, it's, it, it hurt me. It's, it's it had to. Yeah. Do you reach out to him or? He and I didn't have the same kind. Y'all of didn't even have a relationship. I, I remember. Uh, Exactly when I was about to call him. When Chad. he was born? No, Chaddy Boo. Me and Chad was it was a lot closer than uh than Corey. Corey. Yeah, Corey, Corey was born, I think, when Ch- right as Chad was getting ready to go in. Okay. You know, get locked up. And so, you know, he was a little little baby. Same thing with Chris the uh his, his daughter through Shannara. Yeah. So uh, hadn't seen her since Chad died, bro. You know, they know wow. I, they know I'm here. You yeah. Know, and I know where they are. You know, it's just time and real life keep us apart. But yeah. I love them all. Yeah, you know yeah. I, I, I've been in touch with uh, uh, Chatty Boo. You know, I'm, yeah. excuse me, Chad Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we used to call him Chicken. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I mean, he was up here when he got the phone phew, straight to Port Arthur. Straight to Port Arthur. Yeah, yeah. For the, for the his mama had a rig. I remember that. Uh, and the baby was born. Wow. Natasha, what's up? Yeah. Shout out. You know, so that, that that those are the things. Like I said, and, and I'm gonna I'm definitely I, I be writing people. Yeah. So if you locked up or whatever, I need I, I need I to said, start, bro. We got to start doing something yeah. together, me and you just write yeah. and, and pull each other up on it. We got to. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, let's 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 make sure we get this done. I need to get in touch with Corey, though. We can do it. Yeah, because I just, 
since you said that, that's, I, I feel like I'm dead wrong. No, no, and, and it's okay <laughs> because you can fix it. You alive, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, it's, you're able it ain't to too fix late. It. You know what y'all say? It's never too late to stop being a bitch. <laughs> that's true. It's never too late to stop being a bitch. That's right. I've been, I've been acting like a bitch, not, not, not reaching out to that boy family. So, so we, gonna, we gonna get it done. Yeah, it was all. You know, I'm blaming it on the depression. Hey man, <laughs> I blame everything I didn't do on the depression. Man. <laughs> Chicken man, it's been another great segment of yeah. Boss Talk One Hundred and One. And we have.